WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Been working a ton this week, having a lot of friends on, um, and some of the usual suspects and prospects like uh, this guy. Dude, I got to apologize to you because I've had my uh, my wise mug out for a while. Uh, it's just been on the desk. I, I put my Betty Boop lottery tickets away the other day with you uh, after we had $100 winners running around uh, Costas on Friday. So I put those away. They're like, they're away because I'm at Fadley's and I've got bags going. And I have my Coon shirt on because I'm cold and it keeps me warm. But I, I have not unpacked the coal roofing mug. And it's somewhere. The other day, I wanted to get it out for a segment we were doing. And it's in a box with stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Last box. But next week, I'll have, I'm going to re-unveil. And it, it's so homey and warm. And it, it, it sort of comforts me in the way that it's been my primary mug for a couple of years. Probably much to the chagrin of my friends at Royal Farms. Although there's Royal Farms in it. It says coal roofing on it. I hope to bring it back next week because I feel... I feel a little lost without it, to be honest with you. I, I, I actually think this is like sort of a journey that your listeners have been on to see how long it actually takes to find the mug. Like this is there. There's today's like, day sixty four. It could be a special episode. You know what I mean? Like it's the mug day. Like I, you know, I don't know whether you should rush it. Like you should really. Well, I'm not going to be your next Wednesday more morning. Anticipation. So, so, so let's have a, let's have a little executive chat, okay? Let's have some fun here because uh, okay. Bill Cole, Cole Roofing, Gordian Energy puts roofs on, including mine. Thank you, uh, and uh, doing great things with great people. Shout out Isaiah. Um, so, I, I'm going to Florida this weekend, uh, and I don't want to talk politics or mask or what it dipshit runs the state and like i have to i'm going in it's work it's nfl owners meetings I'm gonna try to lay on the beach for a minute friend of mine's giving me his place i'm staying with another buddy of mine other friends aren't there they're doing bad weather in new york so i'm not visiting with everybody but i like south florida enough to get up and down the highway but i'm primarily going not is any sort of vacation way at all to investigate the nfl and the NFL owners meetings and a thing I've done for 15, 16 years, other than the last two years and my wife got sick. Um, I will probably wind up in a corner with Mike Tomlin like I usually do seriously for hours because that's usually the way it ends up. Uh, I have friends in the league that I'm really looking forward to seeing, but not coaches now anymore, right? Marvin's gone. Rex is gone. Nolan's gone. We go down the list. Jack Del Rio, just all the people over the years, Ken Wisenhunt, people I knew really well that I liked a lot. Uh, Jack, uh, well, I'm trying to think. Jack was in last time. Jimmy Schwartz is gone now. Like, all my guys are gone. I don't even know who these people are. Uh, Harbaugh will be there. And I guess we can go through the other coaches that are still left. Sean Payton won't be there, right? What, if you're a fan. You're like, what? Robert Kraft will be there. Dan Snyder will be there. I don't know if Bashadi will be there, but I think so because of the Sashi Brown um, transition. Clearly, we have a franchise in transition. But if you were with me, what would you be like paying attention to in your mind? Well, that's pretty interesting because currently, I think the NFL is at the farthest point in my brain at any point during the year. You know what I mean? Like it's a far in the back recesses. Um, so you weren't paying attention last week when they signed Morgan Moses. You got uh, the WNST text courtesy of Coons. Yeah, Sports. I do. I mean, uh, you know, like, right. That's what keeps it in my brain. It hasn't completely exited, but it's so not much Darius Smith did. I did. I okay. did. That Just doesn't sure. shock me. I mean, it does shock me from the standpoint of like, we always believe that the Ravens completely have their stuff together. And for that to happen to them is rare and almost just totally weird. So it just kind of, I, my default position on that is that guy must be a real knucklehead for that to happen because I don't think that happens to us. So that or his agent's a whack job, one or the other. I don't know. No, I think it was the Darius got cold feet when the money came pouring out on Von Miller and on, and on Chandler Jones. And keep in mind, he's a Darius a diminished player because he was injured last year, not because he didn't perform, because he couldn't get on the field. So right. there's always, will he come back? Is he a year older? What's he worth? How do we value it? And all of a sudden, these these pass rushers were getting 
maximum value. Everybody's betting against the future of the cap, right? That's the, the uh, business. The business of the league is the future of the cap. The business of the league is money to be made in Europe, money to be made in gambling, 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 bet, 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 right. bet, bet, because I just got back from the Super Bowl. And I don't know. And, and the local issue, selling tickets, Steve, that's on you, buddy. Sashi, that's your problem. Local revenue, we're going to make Amazon revenue. We're going right. to get Joe Buck a $15 million contract. So, like, there's plenty of money here but then there's the how much are the players going to get and how are you going to divvy it up when you're giving pass rushers 20 million dollars because and most offenses are getting rid of the ball before you can possibly they, they it sort of eliminates right. your pass rusher I, I mean i just think that the ravens are good enough to not have egg on their face right i'm not saying they land everybody right but when did we start announcing things before the ink was dry? And if the ink was dry and the guy still backed out, like that, just that's just all weird. I, my, if you had to ask me my biggest concern slash question, it is around. Um, so when they went to like the digital tickets and they're pulling the control over the media and the content to their own platform. Like I would want to be a fly on the wall in the, the digital control meeting. Like how do we control our product? How do we grab all the data around our fans so that we can give better information to our advertisers so we can charge them more, you know, like that whole twisting of unknowing, you know, fan Bob sitting in the third row who's on his app in the stadium and like them tracking him all week till next Sunday to know that he buys his coffee at Royal Farms and he gets the groceries at this grocery store and he works here and he lives there and and then how they build the whole digital platform behind that using that data I mean they have more money than anybody to spend on data <laughs> Right. To figuring out how to leverage the data. So that would be that would be the meeting I would want to be in. I want to hear what they're doing that people just we don't even know. We don't even know that it's happening to us. That's Where are you on the social right. side of all this of signing a quarterback with 22 allegations, whatever these things are um, in regard to Houston? And I've talked to a lot of people this week. I talked to an attorney. I respect a lot. Steph Stradley uh, at length. Uh, and she spanked me around pretty good, you know, on legal issues in regard to the case on both sides of the case down right. there. So I thought it was really good. I talked to Chris Pica at length about you're sitting in the chair in New Orleans during the hurricane. You're sitting in the chair in Atlanta, Michael Vick, uh, which he was. And he had, he had just left when Michael Vick's dog thing happened. But he was there all during the Michael Vick era. Um, and I said, so you're in Cleveland now and your owner comes in and says, meet the new quarterback. This is this is. A team-wide problem for the women in the building, for the fan base, for selling this. And, oh, by the way, we're giving him more guaranteed money than anybody else. To me, the guaranteed money issue amongst the other owners, how pissed off Eric DeCosta and everybody in Baltimore is because of this contract guaranteeing this maybe criminal, at worst, poor judgment. I mean, at worst, just horrible judgment. In, in general, in any way, even if he never did any of this, to stand in a position to be accused of it is bad enough. But then to have teams bending over to give him a job. Um, so and I've look, I've invited Jenny Vrentis on who's done a lot of the reporting on this. And I know Jenny pretty well, um, you know, through the years in reporting. So I I'm sure she'll be at the owners meetings. So I'm going to see a lot of media people there as well who are covering the game at the high level. And uh, incidentally, I, I pointed this out to Luke, just, just so you know, I've been going for 20 years. And part of this was very convivial with the media in that it wasn't guard down. It was like, here's the one opportunity where the owners are going to be captive. If your organization will fly you in Baltimore sun, WNST, television station, whatever in Pittsburgh, you will have access to the owner. So, you know, there's more media than you think, but right. it's serious people doing serious stuff. Try owners in the corner. Uh, general, every coach is there. They had a breakfast on Monday and Tuesday morning. That was an hour long with the AFC one day 
and the NFC the next day. You can go back and see my videos of this 15 years ago where I go table to table, and there's Andy Reid, and there's Sean Payton, and there's John Gruden, and there's, you know, like down the line, right? So yeah. they've now made it a half an hour for the <laughs> AFC on Monday morning and a half an hour for the NFC on Tuesday morning. So they've cut all of it in half where Harbaugh gets rambling about rules and yeah. Things he'd like to see happen in football, like these really cool conversations sure. are now like it's the coolest event of the year that they've effed up the way they effed up taste of the NFL, the way they've effed, they've just wound up right. really um, lessening anything that involves the media in regard to access to have a real conversation with real human beings. So, well, because they, you're not real people and they want to control the content like they want you to come to NFL.com and go to the Ravens page and, you know, consume and read their, the spin, right. Consume their content, not everyone else's opinion. In regards to Cleveland, like there's so many layers to that, like specifically about um, criminal players. So this is really, I guess, and I really thought about it. It's pretty disappointing, but like, what if the Ravens brought him in and you're a Raven fan, none, what do you do? No, no. Well, like, none of that shocks me. Like, there's been so many incidents and so much around that. Like, they are consistent. Um, I mean, didn't Kareem Hunt have problems? Like, isn't that why he wasn't a chief anymore? Yeah. And he was a Brown. So, like, the Browns are pretty consistent about not caring about that stuff. I have to assume that inside their locker room and their organization, they talk about second chances. And if we wrap our arms around these guys, we can help them mature and be better, you know, people and all that kind of stuff. I just am calloused to that. Like it's about money. It's about winning Super Bowls, and they don't really let anything stand in the way of that. Does that, Win Super Bowls. Well, it, 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 that's a good question. I, I was going more like, does that ruin the experience for me? No. Does it lessen it? Sure. Right. It's like, you know, that when you have thing. daughters and you have a wife, right? I get it. Yeah. And I mean, we, we went to one game. You know, like, and I'm just thinking of how many massage therapists I've known. Okay. Am I in, in my walk of downtown and white marsh and traveling on the road and having massages in various places, none of them with a little light and illicit workers. You know, I'm talking about legitimate massage for places, clarifying that. male yeah, and for female. Clarifying well, I mean, I should clarify that because I am from Dundalk. Uh, people talk, you know that. Um, so, I would say this of all of those people, the notion that any of them has ever been propositioned given the privacy of it, that would be an interesting question across the board for how many massage therapists have had someone do something untoward to them, male, female, otherwise, in any circumstance. If that's what you do six hours a day, five days a week, um, maybe at some point that would happen. To think that and I've had a few people work on me who've worked to bring on it players. back to gambling to bring it back to gambling. I mean, I would, I would bet like high, high, high percentage that if your career profession is a masseuse, that at one time or another, you have had a client make you uncomfortable like, at the very least, make you absolutely. uncomfortable. Right. right. Yep. Get out of line with you. Somewhere. Get out of line. Correct. Yep. We, we, yep. We, you know, and, and wherever that line is, when you're naked on a thing, the line is like, <laughs> Very you clear. know, it's a, it's a river, you know, and you, you know, <laughs> and the water's clear. here and stay off the beach. You, you know, right. like it right. really it just, it just it's is. Hard. I mean, it's not hard. Right. It's not it's, hard to get confused. <laughs> and, you know, and as a public figure in that position, I would never want to be accused of something like that. Right. So right. I just think to myself of all these people, if any of these humans that I've interacted with and paid and said, thank you. And who've, you know, tried to fix messed up parts of my body and, and you've been a part of this six months ago see me not be able to stand up straight that any of these humans would have this happen to them in that circumstance i really like these people who've been massage. i mean like legitimate physiologists like when i talk to massage it's therapists a, they're serious they're like chiropractors are like serious serious people and it's a dysfunctional part of our society right it's the same thing 
that like really old guys get to say certain things to young waitresses or bartenders, women, right? That are completely out of bounds and unacceptable. If your daughter's a, 17 and waiting it's tables, a dis- 18, right. something's gonna ha- something's gonna be said to her that you it's would punch a, the you would punch the guy right. being her father. I get you. Right. It's a and I'm probably guilty part. of being friendly to people in a way like you know, over 30 years that probably what was acceptable in 1994 probably isn't anymore. Not probably definitely isn't anymore. But that is how this is this is like stupid this is me justifying it which I, is not really my point but that's how we build our defense systems right that's how my, that 17 year old waitress notice i skip putting my daughter in that position because right. that's uncomfortable but that's how they learn to say no like, oh wait a second that was not nice like she didn't even realize it right until right. she got in the back to go get another tray and it's like Oh, and I if think, you're in a position to want to get yeah. a tip, you just smile, right. move on, and you know, dust off the table and say, Let, "Let's get a nicer more. family, sit down the next time." Right? Just yeah, breeds, yeah. Breeds more of it. Sure. I, I think at it. But with 22 more. women, and, yeah. and there's no badge of honor to say I've been sexually assaulted as a being a legitimate massage therapist. Right. I don't know. I like. How do you, as an organization, like? The fact that he had the Cleveland Stadium in the commercials, him at Baker, or whatever, <laughs> right? Like they had, they had to have a, a, I mean, they had to allow them to do that. Like that guy was, and they were pretty funny commercials. Like I thought that was ingenious. He right? wasn't a, he isn't a bad quarterback. I can't. I just think of what you've done. Like you couldn't have more of a community icon building platform. Right. I mean, the dude you built lived, a brand around he the kid. Lived, right. He lives at the stadium. and you burned him down overnight and gave two hundred thirty million dollars of guaranteed money to a yeah. guy who has a parade of women and lawyers chasing him town to town. And now you're having Kevin Stefanski sit in front of me on Monday morning. Not just me. Everybody will be there saying, dude, how are you going to manage this? It's very bizarre. And it just comes back to, like you said, I mean, the people will buy it. Right? Well, there's 32 not teams. Some of them, it's some not them are well run. The, the, the Cleveland Browns are not well run. This is an organization where my pal Mike Pettin took the job as coach going in there and watched the owner walk in and say, I want Manziel, take him. Well, he can't play. Well, you're taking him anyway. Well, he's kind of an a-hole. Well, you figure it out. You coach him up. That's the guy I want. I'm the owner of the team. Boom. And, and people... Uh, Angelos has run the place here for 20, you know, 28, 29 years that way. Snyder in DC, all of that. And there's always this deflection of, you can't say that to the media, that that's exactly what happened. And that's the way it happened. Right. right? Right. So there's no doubt about where this came from, because I, I, again, from a, from a tactical standpoint, as an organization, if you're the Browns, I can't imagine given where they've been at the bottom, like the Orioles, yeah. You don't take this on. You don't take this on and think that this is good business. It's because not. It's not good business. I don't. But think. it. But it. Okay. Right. So we're. I think we can line up a hundred people, and everybody would agree. Be in agreement. Like it just does not make sense on the surface to anybody. So, my question is, how far dissected is the decisions that are made either in the general manager's office or at the league office? from the human fan right like so when i get out of palm beach and see seven dollar and fifty cent lattes and 28 dollar cob salad salad like i that they they're not in the universe we're in or understanding what i mean john angelos has no idea what anybody in this community thinks about his baseball team like literally and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's a rounding error because the TVs get turned on on Sunday and the TV money is there and the uh, apparel deals, people buy the, you know, the Jersey, like all the money is removed. Like you apparently are not allowed to build a pickup truck and sell it. If you don't run commercials all day on Sunday for your pickup truck, like you watch. So there's so much money and it's so far removed from the people part that the people part is, is literally a rounding error. 
And they don't care because look at the decisions. The decisions aren't made around what's best for the people. I don't, I mean. Just think about it, Cole Roofing. You employing a guy, you come in, great guy, top, best roofer there's ever been. Um, well, let's look at the sheet. Oh, you get 22 allegations against you down in Texas. I, how do you, I mean, from a hiring, in, in a normal world, you you can't employ someone like that right now. You certainly can't push them out and give them $250 million of money, but the NFL just did it. The Cleveland Browns just did it. And you wonder why I'm going down to the owner's meetings this weekend with some questions, right? And not just that, but for our organization as well, where the future is for the stadium, for leadership, for Sashi Brown after Dick Cass for 20 years. Um, so this isn't about football. This is about a struggling struggling city in Baltimore where the Ravens are really, really important here. And I think from a business perspective, um, I'm really interested and you are too, even if you're not a PSL owner anymore, or you're not the one running down there for a tailgate, you certainly want to know what the Ravens are up to business wise. And they've been much more secretive about that. And uh, I'm here. Well, I want to them to win feel that when bad. they, when they win, the city is better. The economy of the city is better when they win. I cannot deny that. So I want that to happen. Uh, you, We need to unpack that. So um, we do walk a very fine line uh, when it comes to employing team members at coal roofing. Like we're commercial roofers. Believe it or not, you know, there's not like a line of, 400 people out front of my door this morning who are raising their hands. I want to be a roofer. I want to be a roofer. Like it is a process to find good roofers and to find people who want to go about work the way we go about work, which isn't just, you know, slap the roof on and not care about what you're doing. Good enough's not good enough. <laughs> and, and uh, that will put us in a position where we do have to make difficult decisions about people who have checkered pasts or who are working through stuff now to try and get back on their feet. And for us, it's, it's, there are soft skills. There are things about people, right? Like a simple one is dependability, right? Like if you're dependable, then we can employ you. And we'll look at your background and we'll get the background checks and we need to sort through all that. And yeah, I mean, if you're really bad, like, okay, then I, I you're not dependable. Do. Yeah. That's <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to, that's what we're trying to work through is there are these things, characteristics of good people that yes, they're not, it's not like one means two, but yes, you can't have one if you have two. Right. So if you're always getting in trouble on the weekends and you never show up on Monday, you're not dependable. Well, how can we unpack that when we meet someone for the first time? You know, are you team oriented, right? Like our culture of safety is all built around me looking out for you and you looking out for me. And I don't care what your role is on my team or what my role is. The lowest guy, the guy who's been here two days, if he sees somebody doing something unsafe, it's his responsibility and we hold him accountable to like scream from the mountaintops. Whoa, 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 not cool. So that I have to somehow, when you talk to someone, understand. Make sure that. that that's that person. Right. And sometimes people have never even been in a place or worked in a job or lived in a household or went to a school where that's actually the mentality, right? Like that's not normal so we get a lot of that and that you know you're trying to unpack these things so i it's hard to not hold the browns accountable for being dismissive of like legitimate problems and, and us all scratching our heads but i also would tell you that like it's a pretty tough those are tough decisions it's not tough when you're running an nfl football team right you had a good quarterback. You didn't need to do this. Like, but does that mean you shouldn't? I, I don't know. Those are hard decisions. Some guy, he could probably write the book later on down the road, like what the decision was. But that, but we're have, we're making that decision not about $200 million quarterbacks. We're making that decision about 
guys who are trying to put their lives back together who, you know, got mixed up with drugs, spent some time in jail, or, you know, doesn't have a driver's license because he's had five DUIs. It's like, okay, well, you're not going to drive for us. <laughs> but like, if you can get the bus and you can get here, let us help you rebuild your life. You know, you can make a career of this. So that is hard. Now. We spent a long time this week. At least Rosiniak and I were talking about that with Goodwill, uh, who sponsored yeah, sure. Maryland Crab Cake Tour and things that they're doing for job training and putting people back sure. to work. I had Tessa Gregg's on from, uh, from WISE this week, National Women's Month, and we talked a lot about HR and hiring people. And the word that we came up with that she used that I then stole, which was the theme of Purple Rain 1. When I went into the Ravens building and I said, how'd you guys win the first Super Bowl? It kept coming back to, we, we feel like we have resilient people, people that have been too small, pushed around, failed elsewhere, you know, not good enough here, not fast enough there. And that's the way people have been counted out. They, they, they all had a chip on their shoulder and that showed the resilience of what they were. And then we talked about, being in a supermarket, right, and having to have resiliency through a pandemic where we all experience supermarket life and no toilet paper and different things and shipping and all that kind of like you in the same way. But the resilience thing, you talked about reliable and resilience came up. I'm building a little catalog here, Bill, yeah. of things that you have to have. And, you know, I tell you what, if Deshaun Watson gets through this and wins a Super Bowl, he's resilient. You know, I'd say that. But giving him all of this money yes. was something that's outside the realm of anything normal in the NFL. That the outlier here how is does, guaranteed money for a guy right. in this position. It's incredible. How does the marketplace allow for that? Like, that's the question. Like, okay, fine. Let's go down the resilient second chance path. But yeah, you do okay. that on the one million dollar deal and let's stay right. clean and make sure not the and I'll give you I'll give you a 30 million dollar bonus if you take us to the Super Bowl, you know, like you win the Super Bowl. like, OK, structure it variably with this like pay for play kind of concept. No like, different than any injured quarterback or a quarterback that second yeah. a, a second chance opportunity. Right. So how does the, the second chance that Ray Rice no, never got right? The second chance that Colin right. Kaepernick's never going to get. Right. So yeah, isn't they, that they, weird. Why do they why do they determine certain things are OK and other things aren't? I always think that's weird, too. But like you, in order for him to drive, because they're all deal, white and love money. I mean, that's let's call it what it is. That's the truth that that it this too shall pass and I'll be on my boat and it'll all be good in the end. Right. It, right. But if that's true, then I guess the answer is Ray Rice had no tread left on his tires and Colin Kaepernick really wasn't that good because otherwise they'd have jobs. Right. Well, Kaepernick could have helped some football teams. Man, I thought about that. that. Right. I think so. So why, you know, so well, Kaepernick was blackballed. Things. You'll never get me to say anything else, Putin, you right. know? Uh, so right. that's it. In order for him to demand that guaranteed money, someone else had to have a deal on the table for him. That was slightly less. We're bluffing. Uh, I think these guys are good enough to like, well, he created a market well. in Atlanta enough to chase yeah. Matt Ryan to Indianapolis. I mean, the tectonic plates and the yeah. dominoes and all of that. That's why it's an interesting room with 32 coaches. And it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting room with 32 owners, all of whom are under siege to some degree because of how the league behaves. Just in, in a very general sense, how the league behaves. Right. I mean, yeah. we all love it and we all think this isn't well run. And. Then we could talk about, we did baseball last week, so we'll do that another week. Bill Cole is here. He is Cole Roofing and Gordy Energy putting roofs on. Tell everybody what you do at places like my my business where you're like, hey, dude, you got a leak over here. I got to fix this. I, I don't even think we need to. Like, just rewind. Is that oh. really a word? You know, rewind 20 seconds, a minute, whatever we just talked about. That's what we do, right? It just so happens that we're doing that with humans in on roofs right? Or building solar fields. But really, we're in the business of humans, building teams, finding good people who want to build careers, want to make career, you know, like that's, that's what we do. Like, By the way, I got to give you a shout out. Your dude goes up onto my roof and uh, he comes down and this is so 2022 of me. It's like when I go to my dentist and he shows me the picture of my tooth, like in HD for, you know, <laughs> and, like I can, I can swim into my tooth like an Epcot ride. Um, yeah, I get pictures. I, you know, you you don't like, like he's up on my roof. He's like, hey, you got this, man. And I'm like, 
Because in the old days, you're like, unless I go up there, you know, is he right. selling me a carburetor I don't need for my roof, <laughs> you know? Um, Bill, I appreciate you, man. I will, uh, I'll be seeing you on the other side this week, too, for a cocktail. Bill Cole, everybody, uh, standing ovation for a man who let me go home with all the crab cakes and the crab melt last week uh, at Costas Inn. I'm Nestor. We're WNST. We're bringing the uh, Maryland Crab Cakes to our back out on the road in our Wise Conversations. Uh, as well, sponsored now by Goodwill Industries. I have a whole roster of places in April, but we're we're coming to Greenmount Station up in Hampstead. Uh, we are coming to the Chaucer in Highland Town. And we are, and I'm very proud to announce, we're going to G&A Coney Island Hot Dog with my pal Andy in White Marsh. And we're doing that later on in the month. So we'll get all those dates out on our social media. Back for more on BaltimorePositive.com.